Kakadu National Park. The most unique and yet diverse national park we ever visited. I'm still thinking about it today. Kakadu National Park, traditionally owned by Aboriginal people, is the biggest national park in Australia, with an area that covers 20,000 square kilometers and that extends from the coast in the north through the floodplains, rivers and billabongs to the stone country in the south. These diverse landscapes are the habitat of one third of Australia's bird species and one quarter of freshwater and storing fish species. Due to this biodiversity, it is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but also for cultural reasons as the Kakadu's rock art is one of the longest uh, historical records of any group of people on Earth. So it takes up to three hours to get to Kakadu National Park from Darwin, so we recommend you spend at least two to three days there. We were there in December during the rainy season, so this guide is based on that, but on other seasons there's more attractions open, so you may need to increase your time there. So we arrived at the National Park not so early. The first thing we did was going to the Boali Visitor Center because they will help you figure out your trip based on the season and what's opened. Afterwards we had a quick lunch and we went to a place called the Kaelus Crossing because they told us we could see some crocodiles there. We didn't see any, maybe because during the, this season and the high tide they don't need to come to the surface to heat themselves up that often. But we only realized how famous this place is recently. So it is a normal crossing to get to the West Island land during the dry season. During the wet season, due to high tide, it's closed. But it's famous because people's cars often get washed away by the waters when they're trying to cross it. And also because a lot of people have been killed by crocodiles here. Anyways, you can do a Google search, but it is a safe place as long as you don't get close to the water. There's even a platform where, where you can watch you know, the river and take some pictures. Afterwards we went to Beer, which is an Aboriginal outdoor rock art gallery where we'll be able to see paintings made up to 20,000 years ago. So there's a small track that you can walk that will take you through all of the paintings and up to a rock formation. And this place is perfect to enjoy the sunset, which was what we did. You definitely won't regret it. When we got back to the car park, it started drizzling and like 5 minutes later there was like a huge thunderstorm so we went back to the hotel. So the first thing we did on the second day was going to the yellow water billabong for a cruise. So this is a must do on every season as you'll get a chance to travel through the wetland scenery and encounter a lot of the local wildlife, including some crocs. It is supposed to be beautiful during the sunrise, however we didn't make it. While we waited for our tour, we went to the local Aboriginal cultural center, which provides insights to the local Aboriginal culture in Kakadu. The Kakadu National Park is co-managed by the traditional owners of the land, and there you can learn a lot about the Aboriginal culture, probably more than in any other place in Australia. The final thing we suggest you to do there is a scenic flight over the National Park. We did it and it was amazing to see all the different landscapes from up there, but also because there's a lot of places that you won't be able to see, such as the Jim Jim Falls that almost dry up during the dry season, and this way you'll be able to see them in full splendor. So as I told you before, we went there in December during what is considered the wet season, and there's a lot of places that are closed due to flooding. However, everything else is green and lush, there's a lot of wildlife, there's water everywhere, the waterfalls are flooding, and in the end of the day you get a thunderstorm, which honestly are spectacular to see. So another upside is that it's the low season, the prices are better, there's not a lot of people around, so you get all the attractions almost to yourself. Actually, the local Aboriginal people have divided the year into six different seasons, and this can provide insights to when you should visit. So for instance, let me get my Shichit. You get the Kunumelong, which is the pre monsoon season, with the hot weather that becomes increasingly humid, so it can last from a few weeks to several months, and there's thunderstorms that start to build in in late afternoons that bring green to the dry land. After the season it comes the monsoon season, 
which is a true tropical summer thunderstorms, heavy rain, flooding, but also explosions of animal and plant life. I think we were there probably between these two seasons. So by April you get what is called the knock em down storm season and this is due to strong winds, you don't have much clouds in the sky. So from May to mid-June you get the Yeki, which is the cooler but still pretty humid weather. And from mid-June to mid-August you get the cold weather, even though there's 30 degrees outside. <laughs> and this is when everything starts to dry out. From mid-August to mid-October you get the hot and dry season. And even though you can get some thunderstorms, you also get to see sea turtles laying their eggs in sandy beaches. And maybe getting stolen by guanas. I'll leave a link in the description for more information about this. That's about it guys, let us know in the comments if you have any other suggestions for Kakadu National Park. Let us also know if you have any questions. We will have a link with a quick guide we made that you can download. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs like button, subscribe if you haven't. See you next week. Thank you.